Welcome to RV and Travel Adventures. My name is Jesus Manuel Menegarza. I hope you're doing super fantastic wherever you're at. I'm having a little bit of uh, tea my wife made me. It's a cinnamon apple tea. It's a very nice tea that you got at Trader Joe's. Very warm, very tasty on this fall. Semi, semi wintry day. Hope you're doing fantastic wherever you're at. I'm just going to talk about my two years, uh, almost two years, I'm coming up very closely in about a month on my two year anniversary of owning my 2022 Rockwood Mini Light 2205S. I bought it in December of 21 and uh, I bought it. The main reason I bought it is because I did a lot of reviews, a lot of research and I said, my wife and I want these certain amenities and of course this was our budget my wife said okay you can get something but it has to cost twenty five thousand dollars so when i went when i contacted the dealership they all said 33 28 29 30 thousand bucks and so i said hey um i'll buy it but it's for twenty five thousand dollars i said okay so i bought it for twenty five thousand dollars plus uh you know equalizer hitch that's good for ten thousand pounds for another 700 bucks and that's it plus tax title and that's all we paid clack cash plow so what is my experience uh, so far owning this rv for the last almost two years this is my honest experience as a person who has reviewed a lot of rvs over the last five years previous to uh, owning uh, this rv uh, my wife and i did tent camping backpacking into the wilderness like in the sierras and desolation wilderness we go backpacking uh, hiking in the mountains and uh, stay there for a couple weeks uh, you know filtering water from the lakes and digging ditches to poop etc etc of course off the path you don't want to dig a ditch right in the path where people are walking over there over there but not there okay so that's my bit of advice so my wife and I, the children, we would go, you know, uh, we would go to Big Sur, go camping, tent camping, take my little Volkswagen bug. Eventually my wife and I had a, you know, after the kids, you know, after the kids were grown up and gone, my wife and I, we would go, uh, we had a van in San Francisco. We'd take that van to the Sierras, you know, New Mexico, Arizona and such. And we had a great time, absolutely great time sleeping in the back of our modest little van okay then when we moved to Texas we sold a van because it pooped out it pooped out it was an all-wheel van a very nice Ford van it was all wheel, all wheel drive I sort of miss it uh, I shouldn't have sold it but you know hindsight is 2020 so I did buy a truck uh, 2016 Chevy Colorado with a v6 and it was has a uh, it has a six foot two inch bed I wanted the big bed because I wanted to make it into a bed my wife and I uh, put some uh, padding back there and and we would sleep there while we're camping and of course we bought also a cab to cover it you know we bought it down the street here in Fort Worth Texas so that worked out pretty nice we went camping many many locations in Arizona New Mexico Texas you know truck bed camping it was a lot of fun as long as we were used to you know close to facilities or hopefully the facilities were available uh, we we had a good time and when we were off the beat track again we would dig a ditch <laughs> and call it good okay so we had a great time truck bed camping but eventually we got a little envious as we say in, Sp in espanol we got Nvidia, Nvidia, and we saw all these people with their nice travel trailers, fifth wheels, motorhomes, B, Bs, B pluses, and Cs. And we go, we got to get something. And again, my wife said you can spend twenty five grand on something. And of course, that uh, we didn't buy an Airstream for sure. <laughs> we didn't buy a forty five foot Prevo. Nah, it was out of our budget. And we couldn't buy a B or a B plus back in uh, December 21. All those Bs were going for like a hundred thousand, hundred twenty-five, hundred fifty thousand. 
Some are even going for 200, 225,000. Pretty expensive, and the prices have only have only gone up. Arila, they've only gone up. So the budget was for a small travel trailer that can be towed by my, you know, Chevy Colorado, and it can tow 7,000 pounds. So we bought something that could dry weight, 5,100 pounds, and we said we got to make sure not to overload it. So we only have a few odds and ends in there. Yeah, get it up to about 5,800 pounds. And works out pretty good. Still struggles going up those hills. We have to take it off of cruise control and go a little slower up those hills. We don't want to blow the engine. And um, so I went cr- camping just this last week down the road about an hour and a half that way to Meridian State Park, an absolutely gorgeous little state park, small, tiny lake, but excellent pull through sites with full services. I love that. I love full services. I love pull-through sites. I got spoiled. I like it. So we had a great time. My wife was out of town for a week, so I said I might as well go camping, take the old RV out. <clears throat> so I really like our Rockwood Mini Light 2205S. It meets our needs. Uh, when we went to buy it, my wife and I said we got it. You know, it has two chairs, it has two little recliners, modest low-end recliners nothing super fantastic these aren't thousand dollar two thousand dollar recliners these are you know budget um, modestly padded uh, recliners rv recliners and it has a queen size bed which is very nice with a little thin mattress my wife loves that mattress she says it's perfect i say hey why can't we get a little something a little little more more padding this old dude likes a little more padding she said no i like that mattress so we're gonna keep it has a refrigerator, has a 12-volt uh, GE refrigerator, and GE, they're uh, consumer brands, uh, are owned by a Chinese company. Uh, they're military, you know, when they make tra- you know stuff for the military, power installations, that's owned by the real GE. But the GE brands that you buy at the old uh, 7-Eleven at uh, Target stores and stuff like that, those little products that they sell there, those are all Chinese uh, owned manufacturers. So our refrigerator is working out pretty good. Uh, and we have, of course, have a stovetop and an oven. And it has a space heater and it has a TV, a nice, nice small bathroom. So let me give you my overall review of the whole enterprise there. The bed, no problems, no issues. My wife loves it and it works out very nicely. The blinds, we have the, uh, the roll-up blinds, those work very, very nicely. The windows, no, no issues. The wheels, the tires, the Goodyear endurance tires, no issues at all. And we've put about a good uh, three, four, five thousand miles on them. I gotta check my records to make sure, but it's definitely over 3,000 miles on those Goodyear endurance, and they're, they look almost brand new, okay? And of course, uh, let me just start with the bed. Bed's good. TV's good. It's a, you know, 720p, modest 32-inch TV. Uh, the DVD player's good. The stereo system's uh, adequate. It's nothing great. It's nothing, no audio file's going to go. Uh, I think it's fantastic. <laughs> and of course, the uh, oven it has some issues. It Some pieces came out. I got to connect them back. The, there's a deflector in there that flew out. Well, going down the road. The stovetop's pretty good, except the uh, the burners are not sealed. Anything that falls through the cracks, you have to un- take it apart to get, like we did that once, and I don't do that anymore. I don't put coffee. I don't pour my coffee, or and the grains fall out and go down there anymore. I put them on a tray, as you can see in my last video. The sink, the sink works perfectly. The uh, you know water system's good. The toilet's a little compact. A little, a little compact back there. It's basically squished. It's not going to win any awards for uh, you know toilet sitting. It's not the perfect toilet sitting position, but the TV is perfectly fine. The perfect TV watching position. I like it. It has a little sink, and uh, everything works pretty good. The microwave works good. Everything works according to plan. The AC is a bit on. It's a hella noisy AC unit. It's hella noisy. I don't leave it on during the night. Even if it's 100 zillion degrees, I don't leave it on. Uh, I just have to get used to it. Uh, if it's hot, it's going to be hot. It's going to be. But, you know, the heater is very nice. Like on this last trip, it was a bit cool. So I used this little space heater at night, set it for 68, 70. And it was perfectly nice, a little space heater, using the uh, 
The State Park Electricity, excellent. A plus. I really enjoy uh, that little space heater. And then, of course, the gas heater. I didn't even turn on the gas. I didn't cook anything. I just used the microwave, cooked my meals on the, using the microwave, and just ate some fresh fruits and vegetables. And uh, my diet, Pepsi. Not tea like my wife made me this time. Very nice tea. So the RV's working out pretty, pretty good. Uh, the two major, com the three major complaints, I always complain about number one all the time, but there, there's a, two more uh, things I have to complain about. Of course, it comes with a PWM charge controller and display that's right under the TV. So the solar power comes down, goes to this uh, charge controller, PWM charge controller and monitor, and then the wires go all the way towards the batteries, and that's how they did it. I would have preferred, I would have preferred that the wires come down go all the way close to the battery where instead of that uh, PWM piece of crap, uh, go power piece of crap uh, uh, charge controller, they had an MPPT and they do make a PWM, I mean an MPPT by go power. They do make one. It's apparently pretty good. And there's other brands, you know, some Victron, Victron, dare to dream, huh? <laughs> I would have liked it back there closer to the batteries. It'd be more efficient. And of course, as I always uh, recite, and it's, this is according to everybody I know, all the folks I know, all the experts out there uh, that know about charge controllers say, PWM, no bueno, no, mu, no muy bueno. <laughs> you lose, you know, significant, uh, if you got so much solar coming down, by the time it hits that PWM, it goes, hey, nice knowing you, and it becomes less, and then it goes to your battery. So, mucho, less. It goes less to your battery. That's not good. That's not good. You want to maximize. You want to Muncho, then muncho to your battery, okay? That's a better thing. That's why MPPT, multi-point power tracking charge controllers, are significantly better than PWM, those piece of crap uh, charge controllers by GoPower. And they're in, they're in, they're ubiquitous. They're everywhere. They're in, a, you know, $100,000 RVs. I went looking at some of these $150,000 RVs and I go, a GoPower? PWM? Piece of shit? Charge controller? What the hell's wrong with you people? This is a nice little RV. Why'd you put that little piece of crap in there? It's like they just, uh, you know, I don't know, maybe they think we're stupid or something. So that's uh, number one. The other two things are that my drawers, um, previous uh, camping this last summer and spring and stuff like that, we went traveling around. You know, I would leave things in the drawers, you know, pots and pans, plates, and they would always fly out. And I'd have to replace the uh, rails and such. Not good. So in that course, that wood that the uh, the screws go into f for the rails, you know, the slides, is a piece of crap wood. So, you know, you don't get any decent wood. You know, it's not like an Airstream where it's plywood. This is, uh, you know, some sort of wood that's pulverized and glued together and and uh, almost looks like real wood. They, they put a little plastic veneer on it and say, hey, it's real wood. But it ain't. It ain't. So... So that's a problem. So uh, what I've done to ameliorate the situation is I take everything out, my pots, my pans, my dishes. I leave them empty, 100% empty, and I added some magnets to keep them in place, extra magnets, <laughs> and I take everything out and put it in this large container and I put it in the back of my truck, my pots and pans and dishes. So they're empty. And the refrigerator, that's my number three item, it flew open several times. And there's on the floor, there's ketchup, um, mayonnaise. Uh, over there is the uh, mustard. Uh, no hot dogs, though. <laughs> so it it just opens up. They have this little contrivance that looks like a T, a T that goes over the door, and it's not very good. It should have some sort of serious locking mechanism, but you know, that would require money and engineering. And apparently the folks at Elkhart, Indiana, don't want to do that. They want to be cheap, cheap ass. And for twenty-five thousand bucks, I guess I shouldn't complain. This is not a Prevo. This isn't a. This is not a premium product. This Rockwood Mini Light is not a premium product. Okay, I understand. So everything flew out. So what I did this time is I brought my cooler, a very nice igloo cooler that's super insulated. It's not, uh, you know, it's like you know those Yetis, almost like a Yeti. It's almost, it's almost a Yeti. It's this far, this close to being a Yeti, okay? So it's good for, uh, we've used it for four or five days, and it's kept our food, milk, you know, 
various products. Cool for four or five days. Excellent. So I put my food in there, took it all, you know, I, when I'm coming, leaving home, I put in my food in there, all my perishables. You know, we're talking about things that require refrigeration. We put them in there and close it. And then we put them back in my truck. And we have plenty of canned products. So the refrigerator is empty. Doors locked. We have an elastic that we <laughs> wrap it around and do some stuff with and try to keep it locked so it doesn't fly open. So that's problem number three. So that we've learned from our experience not to leave stuff in the drawers because they're piece of shit drawers. And we've learned not to uh, leave uh, anything in the refrigerator because our refrigerator is going to fly wide open. So those are things. Yeah, it's too bad. that You know, they're not of the highest quality. Something I learned this last camping trip to Meridian State Park, just an hour and a half that way, is not, you know, I was so excited to leave the next day. So I plugged in my truck, the seven pin from my truck to my RV and the next morning I woke up, what happened? My battery for my truck was dead. It was kaput. Luckily, I always carry a little charger, a little battery, you know, jumper, you know, system. And I jumped in and I went home. And it was, it was you know, once the guy warmed up, it, you know, when I went for uh, breakfast in Meridian, Texas, uh, it was no problem. I started, no problem. But... But uh, it's now officially dead. I've char tried to charge it for the last three, four, five days, two, three days, and it hasn't. Uh, it hasn't shown any life. It's pretty much dead. So I'm gonna go replace that. I'm deciding. You know, everybody says get the cheapest battery because they go, you know, just get a cheap battery. And then, you know, just I'm gonna get a battery probably the next few days after, you know, uh, the weekend or so, and just buy one. So. Be forewarned. Don't hook up your seven pin overnight because it's apparently, I, I may be wrong. You're you're probably better at this than I am. It sucked all the juice out of my battery and sent it to my RV, the RV even though I'm, I have full hookups. Okay? <laughs> even though I have a battery in the RV, okay? So on this trip, uh, I only used my little tiny, uh, on the RV, I had a little, little tiny battery, a little, 40 amp hour battery, 12 volt sealed lead acid battery. I used it on my RV. I have over there uh, neatly uh, tucked away are my Aolithium 2 100 amp hour batteries. And I'm a, I'll use those when I do some serious boondocking or something like that. I'll just switch out the batteries. So, or for some longer adventures, I'm planning to a week or two somewhere further away. And then I'll take my Aolithium. 100 amp hour batteries, two of them. And uh, they are A plus, by the way. They are they are excellent batteries, by the way. So everything's working out pretty good with this RV. I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying traveling with it. My wife, when she's, you know, last week she was out of town. I said, hey, I'm going to go do some camping. No problems, no issues. Other than killing my battery, I had a great time hiking, cycling, fishing. Didn't catch anything. And uh, snoozing away and watching uh, movies, and such in my argument we have some more tea ah. i picked site number eight because it's very close to the offices about 300 feet 200 feet away from the offices and their antenna their wi-fi antenna so i got excellent excellent wi-fi so i can stream you know youtube videos i can stream uh, my Amazon Prime movies and stuff like that. I can uh, check my phone for messages. It was fantastic. It was absolutely fantastic. Number eight. That's a great site. It's my old uh, draft lottery number back in 1970, 71, I think it was. My draft lottery number was number eight for the Vietnam War. A great number. So I had a great time uh, camping. And uh, so uh, I recommend... If uh, you have the budget, get something better. My wife and I, if we had more money to spend, we would get something better. But it's all according to your income, your desire, your motivation. And again, how much cash you have burning a hole in your wallet. We only wanted to spend 25000 bucks because my wife and I are going to be moving. Like I always say on this channel, uh, the summer of 2025, we're moving back to the West Coast. And things aren't cheap. On the west coast as cheap they are, as they are in texas so you know instead of spending 150 200 dollars on an rv we only spent 25 so we saved a lot of money 
but you get what you pay for. It's not uh, these excellent. I like these B pluses I've been reviewing lately. The Coachman B pluses, very nice, and also the Thor B pluses, very nice. I really, really like them. But they all cost. Uh, MSRPs are about 175,000. Discounted 125. Uh, after a couple years on the lot, they sell them for like 100,000. But they're still more money than I, my wife wants me to spend. She'd rather buy the bigger house than the bigger RV. Uh, that, and she's the boss lady. That's her, her nickname. So I hope you like this video. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, leave them below. I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. And uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel, and ring the bell for future notificaciones. Gracias a todos a ustedes. And check out my Patreon page, patreon.com slash jmmgarza. And of course, you can see my photographs, my RVTA uh, photographs at rvta.myportfolio.com. Uh, it's a site provided by my membership in Adobe and uh, you know, software I use from Adobe, and Photoshop and stuff like that. And uh, my, they also uh, host my website, my commercial website, my uh, website that I use uh, to promote myself as a photographer and for exhibitions that I've had in Europe, South, you know, in Mexico and stuff like that, coast to coast, etc., etc. And that one's jmmgarza.com. Thank you very much for checking out any of my uh, websites. And uh, here's the information regarding my Facebook uh, page, my RBTA Facebook page. You can go to, down there and join up and check out. I usually post my videos immediately to that site, and I always try to respond to the members of that page. Thank you very much for uh, you know checking out my RBTA Facebook page. From Fort Worth, Texas, this is Jesus Manuel Menagarza. I hope you're doing fantastic fantastic wherever you're at gracias I, forgot, I, I raised my hand a little early let me drop, drop it down again let me start over again gracias adios now <laughs> bye bye